Hi everyone, Joy Thompson here. We are live at Shakespeare Co. in Hamburg. It's very exciting. How are we, David Goldman? I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited about this food. Get to be with my favorite people. Yeah, well, yeah. I know you do. I do have to. <laughs> hi, Katie. How are you? My hi, dear? I'm so excited to be out here at Shakespeare and Company. You know, I've been to the one downtown all yes, the time. It's my have. favorite restaurant there. But I haven't been out in Hamburg. I have to say, this one is even more beautiful. Isn't I didn't think beautiful? that was possible, but gosh, it's there's gorgeous. There's actually quite a bit when you see around the so location. Oh, yeah. There's another bar. Mm -hmm. There's also two other areas over there. There's also the um, patio. outdoor. Yeah. The patio is yeah. my favorite. We're yeah. here all the time. I Good. Live, I live here. Well, I just live around the corner. <laughs> As well, and so do you. Yep. Hey, um, I do have to tell you something funny. We're in my <laughs> office this morning, and we're talking about just people in general, like we normally do. And David comes up with the word saying that he was what? He says he's a hipster, right? He's a hipster. <laughs> Like seriously. Well, he wanted to wear one no, of the skinny ties. No, I had ties. a hipster tie on, and I was like, "Is it too hipster?" And you, what'd you call me, Katie? A, a I said you're bro. more southern bro <laughs> style, but I don't know if I, I don't know what that describe is. this as like '70s movie star. Yeah. You got kind of like the chest hair going, oh, like two buttons down. I don't know. Well, it's a little groomed. People. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He I gets the clippers out. I'm I, sure. I'm a groomer. You're I a am. groomer. You are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I wanted to start off today's show. You know I've been finding these really cute little videos, and I want to show you this kid, and he's being completely smothered by dogs. It is so gorgeous. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And when I saw it, I kept replaying it all the time, over and over on the show, and I just oh, thought to myself, sweet. is that just not the cutest thing you've ever seen? I love it. But I just also think, was the kid <laughs> over there eating the food from the dogs? <laughs> Look at this, it's so cute. I love that puppies and dogs can identify children as well. They're always so protective and yeah. sweet with them, so I love it. That's adorable. Do you have an animal? Yeah, I've got two dogs. Oh, you do? Love them. What sort? I've got a Bichon, and I have oh. an Aussie Doodle. Yeah. A, a what? Auss Australian Shepherd Poodle. An so, Aussie Doodle? I want to start doodle. calling Troy Aussie Doodle. Yeah. Do not call me, that means something completely different <laughs> oh. in Australia. And I'm that's thinking. what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a story that I found quite interesting, and it's basically a story that came out of England. Oh, sorry, here. And it was saying money can't buy you happiness, but it seems it can determine what makes you happy. This is, as I was saying, a brand new study. Do you guys think money can buy you happiness? Well, one of my favorite quotes from Tosh.0 is, you've never seen anybody uh, unhappy on a jet ski. <laughs> so, you know, it just no. is so what true. it is. <laughs> well, unless um, you've had a fall off. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm interested to hear a little more about this study because I read something about a year ago that uh, measured people's happiness level mm -hmm. and it said above an income of 65000 they didn't see a difference in happiness. So they said that was about the amount where you were comfortable paying your bills and taking care of everything, but then having a little extra for fun. So they said between 65000 and 200000 right. they didn't see a difference in happiness level. So. Well, look, I, here's, here's my point on that. I think this study basically came up and said wealthy people find their own happiness in more self-involved right. traits such as pride and contentment. contentment. Researchers also found that people with less money have happiness in other people through feelings of love and compassion. I sort of like that. Yeah, I like that too. I think I find happiness in my personal relationships, obviously, more than tangible things. But let's also be real. A few dollar bills, people, yeah. buy you a little bit of happiness. Yeah. Well, you know, Do sometimes I mean? to go on that fun trip or to mm -hmm. travel, you know, it does take money. It does take that flow. So I'm all about having those... Uh, that money to spend and enjoy, you know, to accent my happiness. Oh, well, we'll ask Brandy about that later on. <laughs> I finally got to meet, we finally got to meet um, girlfriend one. Yeah. Uh, because His this is fiance man friend one. one. Yeah. Well, I said lady friend. Remember I said, <laughs> yeah, call her your lady friend. friend. Um, so Brandy's finally in the audience yep, she's today. Here. She's and you've been with us almost a year, yeah. and I've never met her. I hit her. You what? You I had to hide her from you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't let her know the I truth. I thought you said you hit her. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no. like, she would, would hit back. back. Yeah, she, she would hit back. She'd slap She's you tough. down. Yeah, she would. She She's would. Tough. <laughs> you down. Hey, Katie, you were talking about a topic um, about um, what, hold on, what was it? Ma, uh, sorry, what you can do not, do without Christmas. Oh, do without Christmas. Okay, I didn't know <laughs> which. Like, I wasn't sure if yeah. we were doing Christmas or uh, my couple's fighting topic. So this was just something I saw going around on Facebook, and everyone was commenting and answering, and it was just. It's not Christmas without blank. And so I posted this and I've been asking a bunch of people and I got a lot of, of course, family, friends, 
food, yeah. uh, mom's pie. Oh, and I was kind you. of wondering for you guys, it's not Christmas without blank. And that's kind of what gets you feeling in the Christmas spirit. And what about you? It's, for me, <laughs> it's, it goes back to the food. I just, I think about the next meal, because we kind of jump on the road and go to different houses mm -hmm. to see everybody. And I'm just kind of thinking about, you know, who's dessert. I'm, I'm kind of judging everybody on it, so I've got to let them know where they place. Is there know? a specific dish that gets you in that Christmas? You know, it's Christmas uh, when this comes yes, out. Yes, there is a, <laughs> it's a, it's a Butterfinger, like, pie that, it's like a cake, actually. And it just, it's it like, oh, I love it. It makes me so happy. So, yeah. Really? Yes. I like Christmas carols. Okay. I'm a Christmas caroler. Will you carol for us later? <laughs> yeah, a little. Oh, I didn't know for like, you if it would be snow, but you well, like snow all year round. I like, <laughs> but you've got to remember in Australia, um, it's summer, so they're oh. having major heat issues right yeah. now. It's like 45 degrees, which I think is about 115, 110. <laughs> Oh, do you know what I mean? Something like that. Do they do the um, fake snow machines? Or no. no. Okay. No. But we do, we have um, big, what we call big baked lunches. Mm. So it's where you bake the turkey and that. Oh, sorry, not turkey. So that's American. Um, bake uh, ham and pork, and we have yeah. the crackling and baked vegetables. Oh, I think we do. It's so mashed hungry. potatoes and ham. I'm feeling yeah. like Christmas. I think <laughs> it is. See, it goes back to the food. It's all about the food, people. And Katie, one thing else I wanted to talk to you about was five types of couples Fighting. Yeah, I thought this, this was interesting. It, um, are we a couple? Because we fight behind the scenes. Yeah, like I know. So we probably are. We're a work couple. Yeah, you all are a work <laughs> couple. Um, but I was interested. I wanted to know you, David. It says all couples have a certain amount of these five fights. So I'll just read through them and then you guys okay. can respond. The first one is you have different financial priorities. We've talked about that a lot. Yeah. You load the dishwasher differently. We'll come back. You have different sex drives. You yeah. have different social schedules. That one is rough for me because I go to bed really early. Yeah. And you have different definitions of clean. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. The dishwasher. I've had fights over how to load the dishwasher. Has that ever happened to you? It's For me, it's not. How long have you lived with Brandy? Like, a long time. OK. okay. So it's like, yeah. First of all, she's just happy when I do load the dishwasher. It's like, OK, thank you for helping. Second of all, for us, it's folding laundry. She oh. hates the way I fold laundry. So I've really learned over the years, you know, particulars. So yeah, that's, that's kind of hard. I'm surprised. Our... You both work. Well, you need my housekeeper, Terry. Yes, we do. <laughs> Terry's here in the audience. She probably should be at home making my bed. But I've, I've always talked about on the show, the gal that I, looks after me. Yeah. Miss, Miss Terry. She's <laughs> in the audience. Thank, Thank you, God. Miss Terry. Yes, Miss Thank Terry. You so, Miss Brandy, Terry. we got you. Yes. We're sending Terry to your house. I would love So that. then you never fight again. I'm all about it. I don't know why you don't. Uh, well, we have somebody that comes and does help us okay. clean. But it's those meticulous little things. and. We well, obviously not well. Uh, well, that's why you know, load the dishwasher the and things like that. Um, we need to move it up. Yeah, but do you think that you have any of those other fights? Um, the social thing. But the she social thing, what about she that? She doesn't really fight. She's like, go, because she knows I'm a, I like to go to everything and do everything. Southern bro. Mm -hmm. Yes, Southern bro. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's just like, go have fun, but she'll go and do her thing. Uh, yeah. She likes, she likes to do like hot yoga. That's what she's, boom. I'm but that's, that. that, that's not on our list. Yeah, well, it's a different, different social right. schedules, but that can be tough for me because, you know, I like to go to bed at 7. Well, yes. you don't like, you have to. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to. <laughs> but then on the weekends, I like to kind of stick with it. But we also know when you haven't gone to bed because if you're up past 8.30, <laughs> you're a mess the next day. Yeah, and then we fight. Yeah, and it's not that, you know, a bad mess. I just mean yeah. you're, you're tired. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's exhausting. Um, also, uh, well, it doesn't involve me because I live alone, people. I live on my own. But do you think that you're not in a relationship because some of these fights? Oh. I think we've talked about this before, though. Real Financial talk. priorities, I think, can be a big issue. And that comes in different incomes as well. If you have an income disparity with your partner. Well, here's the thing. You know how I feel on that, Katie? Mm -hmm. There's always going to be someone in a relationship that earns more than the other. Right. And I think you should know that going into that relationship. Yeah. So I've always been a believer that you know, if you're going out, and I don't know your relationship with Brandy on how you guys do financial situations, but I always believe a man should always pay for the woman. Well, I'm a bit old fashioned like that. She's an attorney, and I'm really hoping to be a soccer dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's my goal. Um, just so that's out there, I'm great at being a coach. I love kids, so I could be your kid's future. Oh, coach. so you don't want to have a job? 
No, I would love to, like, again, you don't think that housewife is a job? No. Hold on, David. No, you said you want to be soccer dad. Yeah. Well, if you want to be house different. husband and do all the work, then yes. Because yeah. that's real work. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I, I wonder if you're that. still going to get married in July. Yeah. Now you've just said June. this. Yeah, no. She, I don't know how she feels about that. Well, this was interesting because it was saying even if you have the vast income disparity, having the right financial priorities, yeah. that's what people fight about. So even if one person makes more than the other, as long as you prioritize the same things, you won't fight about it, I guess. Well, and look, I think everyone will come up with their own way to work in a relationship. But yeah. David, I want to get to, onto a topic that is a little bit disturbing, Uber versus ambulances. Yeah. And where are you going with this? People well, basically, uh, ambulance uh, have gone down about 10% in the last four years, and people are calling Uber to go to the emergency room, even though it might be a lot like uh, you might have fallen and broken your arm. Yeah. So oh, people wow. have like, you know, these larger deductibles, and one, yeah. of, one of the big things is this can save a humongous amount of money in the healthcare costs. Because if you take an ambulance ride, you're going to spend a minimal of $750 to $1,000. Is it? Okay. So, okay. you know, it's like if you have a large deductible of $5,000, this is a great way to get around it. Now, Uber did comment on it, and they're just kind of like, well, we really hope people actually use real emergencies because we're not law enforcement. We don't want to put our drivers in predicaments. Ambulances, you mean, yeah. Yeah, um, because, well, um, I thought about it. They said law enforcement. I was like, well, are people getting Uber rides down to jail? I, I don't know, to the courthouse. <laughs> to surrender themselves. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I've got a court date, just call Uber. But could you all, like, if you had something happen, would you ever think, well, call an Uber, don't call an ambulance? Well, actually, I think there's probably well, a fine line here. Let's say I fell over here and cut part of my head. Right. I I probably don't want to shell out a grand to ride in an ambulance, I but agree. I don't want to drive. So I think you have to just use personal discretion here. So I may use an Uber to yeah. go to the hospital, but uh, you not know if I passed out. I have you know? to be honest with you, I think I think a lot of people sitting at home also would be would be in agreement. It saves you so much money. Yeah. Like an Uber Within reason, I think. Like yeah. Two thousand dollars or fifty I'm not Uber. What do you call it? Um, an ambulance. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's all good and well to say that you would divert having an ambulance, okay? But if you are having the signs of a heart attack or the signs yeah. of right. a stroke, you need an ambulance. Yeah. You gotta, it's all time. Mm -hmm. It's time. Yeah. And they always say, we had that on our show as well, talking about um, choosing your closest emergency room. Yeah. You know, I remember I had an accident in Utah on the tennis court. And when I got in the ambulance, they said to me, what hospital would you like, sir? And I'm, I'm laying in the bed going, I don't know. Yeah, take me I, to the closest. I ended up going, well, I didn't know. Well, I didn't say that. Right. And it was the first time that I used an American medical situation. So they took me to the furthest one away, which you paid for. It well, was yeah, but sometimes you don't want to go to the closest one. If I'm walking out here and I have a gunshot wound, take me to the best trauma center. Because there are some hospitals that are known for, if you walk in alive, you're leaving alive. Okay. Now, if I have a smaller issue, take me to the closest. That's a good but, point. You know, Spelled. I think you have to know your local hospitals. All right, got you. Well, that's <laughs> it for Table Talk, everyone. Coming up after the break, we're sitting down and we're going to talk about my brand new show, The Younger You oh, yeah. and also What's Popping. You're watching Midday Kentucky, everyone, live at Shakespeare & Co. here in Hamburg.